Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Dexter, and today I wanted to share with you all some PSA submissions I'm about to send out. You may have seen my last video where I reviewed some of the cards that got back, and you know, it's the good, the bad, the sad. <laughs> um, I've learned from that a little bit, I feel like. I just put together and actually a much bigger submission. I still have some cards that I'd sent off that I haven't gotten back yet, unfortunately, and a good chunk of these cards will also take a while to come back, but I've got a couple quicker submissions included in here that, are, that should have maybe one month to turn around, if not faster, based off of last time, maybe a little slower. Uh, I'd love to share them with you and go over a little bit of the process in case you've ever wanted to send off cards to PSA and want to know kind of how it works, process, how to prep the cards, pricing, all that sort of good stuff. So what I've already done is I've already arranged my submissions into three different stacks. And, and the way I've done it is based off of the pricing and value. So what PSA does is they have a few different ways you can submit stuff. You can submit it based off of purely what you expect the value to be, which is great if you're not in any sort of rush for time, if you're not worried about getting it back sooner or whatnot. Um, definitely sort it by value because the lower you think the value is, the less they'll charge you. Uh, and it goes from there's the base, which is going to be um, anywhere from zero dollars. Maybe it's just a sentimental card. Maybe it's not really worth anything at all, or not yet at least. And maybe it will be one day. And so when you do that, it goes from zero dollars to one hundred ninety nine dollars. And this is for TCG cards. So sports cards and other stuff have different pricing brackets, uh, which I'm going to have to mess with soon because I have some old sports cards I do want to send off. Uh, but anyway, so the zero dollars to one hundred ninety nine dollars is the base. Now normally that would be a twenty dollar charge per card. Plus, um, there's some guarantee service and the shipping, they return it back and all that sort of good stuff. So there's a little bit of surplus, but the bulk of it's going to be the $10 a card, or sorry, $20 a card. Now, I do have a silver membership with PSA. Uh, they offer different levels of membership. You pay a once a year fee and you get access to, sometimes you get vouchers and that sort of stuff. You get better pricing on the cheaper cards. The idea is if you're going to send off a lot of cards that aren't necessarily worth a lot individually, they'll save you some money instead of $20. It's ten dollars a card. So my first stack, uh, I think I, I think I have thirty three, thirty. I have thirty something cards in there that are I believe to be worth it up to one hundred ninety nine dollars. And some of it, you know, could be wrong. Maybe I'm undervaluing them, you know, which would be nice based off my last experience. <laughs> um, you know, some of them, you know, they, they might not be worth that much at all right now, but I just like them. So that's the first batch is the zero to one hundred ninety nine dollar range. And the second set is what cards that are valued from the $200 range up to $999. Now, those are going to run $50 a card. So it is a little steeper. However, the turnaround time is supposed to be a lot faster. Um, now, obviously, right now, the times on the site are not correct. Everything is backed up like crazy between a combination of, you know, 2020's drama, which is still going on, unfortunately. Uh, and then also the fact that everyone is just kind of going through their stuff at home. Everyone's kind of getting into the hobby. So a lot of people are sending stuff off that just would not normally be sending it in, uh, which you stack on top of the you know 2020 stuff that I'm not going to name. Um, you know, it just slowed things down dramatically. So at $50 a card, and again, those are cards valued up to, let's just call it a grand, $999. And it's got better turnaround time. So I've got a few cards in that stack. And then the third tiers, which kind of where I'm capping it, is going to be cards worth up to $2,499. Now, this runs $75 a card. So definitely not steeper. Um, I would say unless you were certain that a card is worth at least a few hundred bucks, um, or not even a few hundred. If you're 100% that this card is worth at least $75 to $100 more no matter what than what you think it's valued raw, you know, don't do it. Don't do it because if the card comes back and ends up somehow being a six or a seven, and you spent seventy five dollars on it, and now it's maybe worth a hundred bucks, and oh, it, 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 you know, it's always your decision. It's discretionary, right? It's it's what do you think? What do you feel when you look at the card? What do you value it at? Um, but honestly, it's it's kind of a tougher sell at seventy five, just because if you are really off on the value, you just dump seventy five dollars into one card. Now, also. One of the other things, like I said, there's two reasons you, you pick a, a category. It's based off of value or uh, time. And, and what I meant was you can technically put a card into another tier if you just want to get it back faster. So like if it's a card that just you don't care if it's an extra 20, 30 bucks, you know, maybe maybe it is only a $180 you know, card, um, but you're okay with spending 50 bucks because maybe you got it for free off a friend or you got it off of a random booster pack. So it's like, whatever, I'd rather have it fast, fast, fast so I can turn around and sell it 
or you know maybe a friend wants it or whatnot and they're gonna buy it off you basically sell it yeah um, so if there's a time factor involved you may pay extra to just make it go faster uh, however you have to pr put it in at least the right value tier so if a card is a thousand dollar card don't try to send it off in the you know ten dollar card tier because PSA if they notice that they get a little salty and they put it in the site now I don't know I don't know for a fact that they've done this, but it's on the site, and I'm sure I could ask around, but that if they come to the conclusion that you were purposely lowering the value to try to get around that pricing, because obviously they do insured mail and all that stuff when they mail it back to you, and, and they're pricing the, they price it for a reason. So if you try to you know get around the system, they can withhold the card until you pay them, and if you don't, what they'll do is they just send it back ungraded, which is a whole other issue, uh, because then you know, your card was tied up for however long, and you get it back, and you paid for shipping, you get paid to have it shipped back, and it's ungraded. So just, at a minimum, put it in the tier that it really belongs in for value, but you can bump it up if you just want it faster. And there's different options, but those are the, the three I'm messing with. Um, there's options for even more valuable cards, but I, I don't have any of that valuable yet, at least I don't think I do. Um, so I'll go over it pretty quickly with you, what I've got right now, because uh, I do already have it arranged. So my first card, and, and a lot of these are going to be Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, what's also nice is a lot of these are cards I pulled myself, but some of them are ones I got from friends or bought off folks. The first card is a mind control card. It is from one of the World Championship sets. So this thing is in a very pristine condition. I did not see any issues with the corners, the way that they were cut. I didn't see any issues with edging or, or any sort of you know damage to it. So I'm very optimistic this will come back as a 10 or at least a 9. And again, this is my under $200 value uh, estimate set. So that's the first card. Then I also have from the same World Championship, or actually, no, no, this is a different one, sorry. This is from the Sacred Cards, which I believe was a video game a promotional set. I have this and a couple other cards from that set, but Rear Yoku, which is a fun old school card. Again, very similar condition, very, very clean overall. Just looks good, very optimistic with that. Now also, when you send it off, and I didn't do this the first time, <laughs> so, uh, um, put every, make sure the cards are in sleeves, right? Preferably the, you know, ones with some spacing on them. Uh, and then, you know, just buy these little tabs. If you go to any sort of office supply store, or I, I got these at Walmart today, actually, you know, I was just doing some shopping. Um, you can get these little tabbies that go on, you know, the edges like notebooks or whatnot or textbooks and just put it on the back of the little protector and then put it in a hard plastic protector. Uh, now these are nicer than I need to use. They actually have options. They're a little cheaper. Um, but just my local comic book store didn't have those in stock. So I was like, whatever, it's a couple extra bucks. But anyway, so then you can put it in. And then when uh, when it gets to PSA and they are opening the package, they're just that much less likely to make any uh, huh, damage or anything like that to your card. They just pull the tab, it comes right out. So boom. Then I also have another, uh, the Sacred Cards card, Negate Attack. Always a classic. Same. Uh, I think it's like a 10. Now, I've got some good Japanese cards from my buddy as well, the same person I got these first few cards from. Um, in fact, a lot of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards came from him, so awesome. Thank you, Mike, if you're watching. Uh, this is a Japanese Kaiser horse, or I think that's what he's called, Kaiser Horse C Kaiser, something like that. But it's from the first Japanese Kaiba structure deck, which they did call him structure and says starter in Japan. So this is a pretty clean one, hollow from that first deck. Looks good. I love the Japanese cards. Oh. Then this is the original Kaiba starter deck, Blue Eyes. The only thing that confuses me is it's the first starter deck, and Blue Eyes is so big in the anime that it's just kind of shocking that the starter deck didn't have any hollow Blue Eyes. And it's funny because there's three Blue Eyes White Dragons in the Japanese Kaiba starter deck, the first one. Um, there's the Japanese. There is one that is in what they call it like Asian English. It's English. Um, and then there's one that's, I believe it's in Korean or Chinese, but there's three of them total in the deck. So, you know, because it's actually like in the show where Kaiba had three Blue Eyes White Dragons. So a little bit different, right? A little different. Now from the Yugi Japanese starter deck, I do have Dark Magician Girl with her original, at least for the regular OCG art. Um, because if you look into it, there's actually a lot of older cards before the real OCG Um it's very different. It looked more like the anime ones. Where there's a lot, no text going on. It's just like the, the art and whatnot. So that one's beautiful as well. And then the next card is actually something a little... 
And the next card is actually something a little different. This is one I got from another friend. It's not uh, really a TCG card per se. It is a, it's hard to see in the image. This is a 90s, let me see if I can do that properly. There we go. Uh, it's a Captain Marvel card from some DC comic set. Pretty cool thing is mint. Had a lot of sentimental value to him. So even though from what I've seen online, there isn't really a lot of value to it. I figured why not get it graded? Uh, in fact, I couldn't even find that PSA had ever graded this. They graded a Superman from this set, but not the Captain Marvel, at least not that it's ever sold. Um, and I couldn't find it even in just the, the database. So I don't know, but it is from a old school DC hologram uh, of fame set or whatnot. And there's only a handful of cards in it, which is funny. When you look at it, it's Captain Marvel. Okay, fine. You yeah, know, cool. Uh, Shazam. So this is pre-Shazam, I guess. Uh, Hawkman. Lobo. Okay. The Spectre, Superman, a Swamp Thing. So Swamp Thing got grouped with Superman. So okay, <laughs> I mean I know he's really powerful. Don't no no haters. Don't hate him. I'm just saying, as far as in the uh, in the cultural, you know, out there, I just don't ever really think of Swamp, you know, Swamp Thing like that. But I guess grouping with Superman back in the '90s, and this card is actually from 1993. So I was five years old. So that's a cool card. Now, also from the Champions Path Elite Trainer Box um, for Pokemon, I do have three of the Charizard Vs that I took out of the box myself, and I took out of the plastic myself to send them off. Um, so I'm optimistic that these should be ten, but you know they do take into account centering um, and corners. So sometimes the corners don't come out right because you know they're in that little plastic and they're they're bouncing around and whatnot. Um, so. You never really know. Um, even even if you open it yourself, it might not be a 10, just if the, the, the plastic got bounced around and whatnot. And then also, you may be wondering why they're not in the sealed plastic. Well, honestly, uh, PSA charges extra if you want something graded in anything that's too big to fit into a regular slab. And it's called a slab, the little plastic thing they're sealed in. Uh, and I've noticed that it seems like if you have a PSA 10... Having a PSA 10 seal doesn't seem to mess with the value very much, at least from what I've been able to research on most cards. I'm sure if it's some ultra rare, very, very limited population card, it, it I'm sure it makes a difference then. But if it's something that's already got, you know, a lot of cards out there, people are like, oh, it's a 10. Well, if it's a plastic, it's a 10. I don't know. From what I could research, at least it's something that they, they brought in enough money to make a difference. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should have kept it in the sealed plastic, but I don't know. So like I said, I got three of these. And then also from Champion's Path, I have one of the secret rares, Kabu, full art, secret rare. Cool. He was one of the uh, cooler gym leaders, in my opinion, in the new games. I always like fighting the fire gym leaders. It's always fun. Not that there's been a lot of them, but you know, I just love anything fire. I love fire Pokemon. So <laughs> it's a cool one. Took that out of the booster pack myself. So again, I, I hope for a 10. Um, should be a 10. But again, there's sometimes you can't control things with the corners and all that stuff. But it seems like newer cards, the corners are a lot better cut. It seems like there's a lot less issues. Now, this is from um, the 2020 Ten of Lost Memories Yu-Gi-Oh uh, set. So it's this little like gold sarcophagus thing, and you open up, it's got some special packs, and these cards don't want to be able to pack. So they're basically reprints. From what I understand, that they're they're just straight up reprints with the same art and everything, um, but of course different set numbers in the bottom right. So this is Pot of Extravagance, which I've heard has been very popular in the meta, or at least it was for a while. So uh, it seems like one of the most valuable cards that's in this set as well, because not just because it's a cool card, it's a reprint, but also because it's very useful in the game. So what's going to happen is there's not going to be a lot of perfect condition ones out there because everyone's getting them is playing with them. So, you know, just a good card. I like the artwork. And I always loved Pot of Greed back in the day. So, now this is another fun one. So, and I, I did shoot a video for this one, but I am still getting used to making videos. And if you've watched some other videos, you may notice my energy levels, you know, a little better, a little better. Um, I've, I've actually shot some videos I have not uploaded. Uh, just to kind of get used to the movements and all that stuff. Uh, you know, getting used to the editing and changing things around. So, I was randomly at Walgreens a few weeks ago. And, you know, I was just do my little thing, passing through. I always go look at the Funko Pops real quick just to kind of check out what they've got. I, you know, you, I do a lot of grocery shopping at Walgreens. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I just, it's right across the street, so why not? And they had uh, two blister packs on the rack, just two, in the whole section for Pokemon. So I was like, why not? Uh, and it was XY Evolutions, I think. Um, 
it, it might have been a different XY, uh, XY breakpoint. Sorry, I think it's a breakpoint. Yeah, breakpoint. So I bought two booster packs. And guess what? I pulled in one of them. Da -da -da -da. Gyarados EX. And it's shiny, just like the one in the second gen. Now, this is a secret rare. I just pulled it up in a booster pack at Walgreens. So I love it. I always love shiny Gyarados. I still bring through my uh, my shiny Gyarados from the VGC um, games on the Game uh, no, Game Boy. <laughs> feel old. Uh, although I did have him on the Game Boy. But on the Nintendo 3DS, I played those, and then I made sure to bring him forward. So I actually have my red Gyarados in Sword and Shield. So, boom. I love that. It's got a little, was it, Manphy, right? Manphy. Um, and then, of course, it's got Greninja, which Greninja is awesome. I wish they'd bring Ash Greninja to the new games, but I know that they already were hard. It's already hard enough to get them put Pokemon where they want in the games, right? So, anyway. Now, also from Vivid Voltage. So, I have a couple of good cards from Vivid Voltage. Uh, the first time I opened them, again, I've recorded some videos. And I I may upload the second one I had shot. I just wasn't really happy with it. You know, I'm trying to get my, like I said, my energy up and all that stuff. Make it more bearable to actually watch me. Um, but the first time I bought some, I pulled a Celebi. Amazing Celebi with a beautiful, like, watercolor style art going on. I just love it. I love how it, it leaves out of the box and all that good stuff. It's all over there. It's, it's got that beautiful, you know, strong, uh, glittery thing going on. So I love that. And that was actually, I just bought a handful of loose booster packs of Barnes & Noble. So I'm uh, just rolling through. I was buying a, I think I was buying my Kindle at the time, and I just saw a handful of Vivid Voltage booster packs. So I was like, why not? So this thing's beautiful, okay? You know, let me, uh, let me plug the phone in real quick, my, my camera, make sure it's staying charged because don't need this thing to cut out. There we go. Now, the next one is also a Vivid Voltage card. It is the amazing Jirachi. Again, I love the color, even though I am, I am colorblind, uh, but I love the color. I uh, just love the way it pops. I love how it kind of creeps out of the box. Very beautiful. And then here's a fun one I pulled from, uh, and I think I pulled this one on camera. I can't remember if it was my first video. It was from a Spell Roar reprint pack I got at Tar uh, at Walmart. So it is a Toon Mermaid. And again, Spell Roar, not Magic Roar. And so what's fun is this is for one of those repacks they did. I think it's 2016 or 2017. Um, but the way it was done is they reprinted uh, a bunch of the original booster packs and they didn't change the dates or the sets. They're just literally reprints from, you know, Bandai, Namco, whoever, Konami, whoever it is that prints them. I always forget. Uh, it's on the card, obviously. Um, but as far as I've been able to find is other than the thickness of the card, maybe being you know, slightly different that only maybe someone's used to really looking at them can tell, they are reprints. And there's no discernible difference on the cards from the foil to the text, um, any of that. Uh, obviously, no first edition because reprints. But basically, these are considered the same as the original ones as far as the Unlimited. So send my Toon Mermaid off and see what they say over there. And then from my... So I got a... I forgot to mention. Uh, I got a first edition Joey deck off of Marketplace about a month ago. And the thing was just beautiful, very pristine. Um, so I was able to get that. It was not sealed, but the cards were just in the best condition uh other than i'll go over that in a second other than the blue the red eyes had a i'll go over that but one of the ones i'm sending from there is of course scapegoat which is always an awesome card if you watch the anime you know joey uses it all the time uh but yeah so you see it's it's charter deck joey and it is a good old first edition of that foil beautiful immaculate that scapegoat now this is a fun one because this one <sighs> I'm not 100% sure. Um, so if you know any about old school Pokemon card collecting, you know, first edition is like the big thing. You know, at first edition, Shadowless. Well, I've got this. So Matchamp is a weird one because every printing of Matchamp in the original set was a first edition. Because, I don't know, they just did that. And every, as far as I know, there, he wasn't even available in, I say he, uh, uh, it wasn't even available in the booster packs. It was a promo card in different things. It was in uh, a couple, it was on the starter deck, um, two person starter set type of thing. It was in, this one's actually from a CD ROM game. Uh, it was a promo. It was actually sealed when I got it. 
Um, there's one that was in uh, one of the starter decks. So there's like four or five or I think there might be even six variations of it. Um, some of them, I think one is actually Shadowless in the first edition. Uh, there's some where the years are slightly different down here. There's, there's like several variations of him, which makes it a pain because uh, the values, you can't always go by the sale values because sometimes it's just people buying the wrong one and they messed up. So <laughs> um, this card, it, it was still in the sealed wrapper. I literally just took it out. And honestly, it could be worth anywhere from 100 bucks to $1,000 to depending on the grade. I, however, noticed, and I, and I put it in one of these things just because I didn't have any of the clear ones that were the right size. Um, on the back, on a, two of the corners, it's just the slightest bit of whiting on the edges of the corners. Because again, it could be in a sealed wrapper for however long, but if the wrapper is being moved around, pushed against stuff, it still could get damaged. So I think optimistically, and we'll hold me to it when I do the opening and whenever this comes back, um, I'm thinking optimistically an eight, probably a seven or a six, just because I've had bad luck so far. So um, I'm putting this in the under 200 pack because I don't think it's going to come back as a nine or 10. I think it's going to be like an eight or seven. So again, I mean, it's a beautiful card, though. The surface is perfect. The front is absolutely beautiful. You know, corners, edging, everything's good on the front side. It's just the back side had a few little issues. But, you know, last time I sent cards off, there was a couple cards that only had a little back side issues, and there was the ones that got dinged the most. So. Now, also, the same pack I got the Gyarados from, not the same boost, the other boost pack, uh, I got a Scissor EX Full Art, right? Beautiful. It is not a secret rare, but I still love it. I've always loved Scissor, uh, if you say Scizor or whatever. Um, Scyther is one of my favorite Pokemon growing up. Even though he never, at least for me, I never found him to be very useful, you know, to play with. I know uh, Mega Evolution Scissor was pretty popular though, you know, a few years ago. But yeah, and and, the, and then when I was playing back in the day, I just never could really make him work on a team. Even though I just love the way he looks; he's just so awesome. The blade arms and all that crazy stuff, and then you got Scissor with like the weird, you know, crab uh, arms and all that stuff. So pincers, I should say. So I love that one. Then also when I pulled uh, a little while back. I can't remember the name of the set right this second, but I have a M Gardevoir EX, which is just out of a booster pack that I bought somewhere. You know, I'm I'm not big into newer cards, honestly. Um, but sometimes I'm at a store and I see a couple of them on, the, on the rack. You know, they put it there at the point of sale spot. I'm like, eh, I'll grab like one or two, whatever. You know, it's like five or six bucks for a few of them, for a couple of them. So I'll buy a couple and I pulled this out. So a little full art M Gardevoir, right? Not a secret rare, but still really cool looking. And here was is another one of my favorites because I do like the evolutions. Although this one's not one I have a, a big personal attachment with. I'm more of the original evolutions. Uh, well, and Gen two. I love me some Umbreon, but I do have Sylveon GX. Again, I uh, I have to check my list because I'm not 100 percent the set this one's from. I'll probably put it on the screen. Um, but yeah, this is one of the first ones I ever pulled. Look like this is kind of kind of full art style. So. Boom. And there's a secret rare variant of this, I believe. This is not that one. So still looks good. Go nice with my my original PSA 8 uh, jungle uh, first edition Jolteon that I got. So now, as far as these other cards and sets, some of these are kind of weird ones. So I do have a complete set of the Legendary Collection uh, Egyptian God cards that came from the 2010 Legendary Collection uh, special set. So this, of course, is Obelisk. And you can see where it says limited edition. And I don't know if you can read it in this camera. I'm trying to get a good angle, but, you know, it's, it gets a little weird sometimes. Uh, basically, this cannot be used in a duel. So these are uh, one of the printings that were not, you know, game legal. Now, of course, if you watch videos and all that stuff, or you may already know, there were there are game legal gods, and their abilities are reduced somewhat. So um, there are legal versions of the gods. They are not banned in all tournaments and all that junk. It's just some versions are not allowed to be used. So purely promos. So I have Obelisk, and you see what's really cool is the card, actually the backside's a little bit different color. It's kind of a, a bluish, so it's kind of cool. My camera does not like the reflection off the plastic, so. <laughs> and then of course you have Slifer, the executive producer. Um, anyway, so you have Slifer the Sky Dragon. And then you have Winged Dragon of Raw. So love these cards. Little question marks on the attack are always fun to look at. And again, those are all limited editions from the Legendary Collection. And the other three I have from Legendary Collection, I do have the Legendary Collection Blue Eyes. You can see the tablet in the back. 
Uh, the stone tablet that talked about the gods and all that in the anime. So that's a good one. The Dark Magician, again with the tablet in the background from the anime. And then we have the Red Eyes, which does not have the tablet. But, you know, it's not, it's not Yugi or Kaiba, right? So I still love Red Eyes, though. I think I love Red Eyes more than Blue Eyes. So everyone's different. Now, those cards, from what I found, they don't really sell a lot of them because it was a limited run in 2010. Um, and, and, you know, they, they sold a lot of them, I'm sure. But the PSA 10s, the ones I found were all like in the 120 to 160 value range. So, uh, you know, they may not be heavy hitters right now, but in a few years, who knows? Uh, and if you haven't heard me say it before, I'm not looking to flip, you know, cards really. Like, obviously, if something comes back and it's something I don't care about at all, um, or if it's like a low grade where it's not really going to be worth anything in the future versus now, I'll, I'll probably sell that, you know, sort of thing. But a lot of these cards, they're going to sit in there for a few years in, in storage or whatnot. And then, Maybe one day sell sell them off, but like I said, if it's something I actually like, or if it's like a good 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 grading on stuff, I'm gonna keep it for a while. But yeah, but right now, if you're looking at those cards, if you can find them, um, you can still find people selling the actual legendary collection uh, box set still on Amazon sometimes, and then just make sure the you know get them graded. Um, but yeah, those are still cool. Now this one's from XY Evolutions. It is the Mewtwo, which I did not realize. I got this from one of the tens. Uh, but apparently, it's actually decently valuable. So um, it wasn't it was no pushover. It was like hundred bucks plus, which is cool because I just got it one of those random tens at the at Walgreens a couple years ago. So <laughs> got that one. So again, most of these cards are cards I pulled myself or bought myself. But there's some that I, I bought off people or got off. Like this one is from the Joey First Edition deck. So I've got the Penguin Soldier First Edition. Thing's beautiful. Didn't see any issues on it, although. You can see some of the edging. Some of these old ones, they cut them weird at the factory. So that that could be an automatic nine just from the ed the cornering. But man, now this one I pulled recently on a video. I think I, think I didn't upload. Uh, this one is going to be the delinquent duo, and this one is actually from the spell roar reprint. Beautiful foil. The way it goes with the numbers in their heads and all that good stuff. It is of course again because it's from spell roar. It's an unlimited. It's not a first edition. And the last few in that first $200 under ba batch, um, they're actually all Pikachus. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Um, so I'm trying to remember exactly which ones they are uh, because I've got a few different variations. Uh, but here, I'll just kind of put them up. Now, two of these are like the same card, but they have different uh, symbols in the bottom left. So you know that they're different ones. But like this one's much thicker. So if I remember correctly, I'll have to double check. I believe this one is a McDonald's Pikachu that I got because I, I hate McDonald's. I don't eat a lot of fast food in general, um, and I really don't eat McDonald's. But they I saw that from promo going on, so I was like, why not? I think I got a McFlurry or something. I got the card. Whatever it was to get, it took to get the card, uh, and I think I threw the food away. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did get the Pikachu, right? And then I also have this one, which I believe uh, is the General Mills one. They had this thing where if you bought cereal, it could have cards inside. And I believe this one came from that. And I think it was either Cocoa Puffs or, or it was one of those ones I, I, that I did eat. So I did not throw the cereal away. I actually ate it. I was like, I'm going to buy the cereal anyway. So I'm going to get the one with the Pokemon cards. So got that Pikachu. And then I have this other one. This might be the General Mills one. So like I said, I've got to double check my list. Um, yeah, because I can't remember which one's which just because <laughs> oh, there's a lot of cards. I'm trying to memorize every set off the top of my head. But yeah, so these are all you know kind of cool promo Pikachus. Uh, goodness. So yeah. That's my 200 and under set. Now, the next one is my cards that I believe are worth um, up to $1,000. So these can be really far off. Uh, they're worth at least $200, though, if they're PSA you know, 10 and whatnot, as I think they are. Although one of them, I think it's only probably an 8 or a 9, but it still could be worth a few hundred. So the first one I did pull out of a Vivid Voltage box, Vivid Voltage box which, again, I'm thinking about uploading this video still. I'm just going to mess with it is the VMAX Pikachu, the big old Pika chunk, chunky boy. Now, this is not the secret rare that's worth like the crazy money. However, this is still one that people really seem to like, still seems to have good value, still seems to be very hard to get. Um, you know, it's a full art, right? The difference with the secret rare, it has a kind of weird coloration thing going on with it where it's a different coloration. But yeah, I love the Pika chunk, a little chunky action. So that one... Uh, I've seen it as high as $1,000 PSA 10, go, at least selling price. 
Uh, actually, no, I didn't see a couple sales. There were a couple sales on on PSA Ford. So um, yeah, it, it could be it could be worth a few hundred bucks. But either way, I just like it. It's one of the best pools I've ever personally had out of you know a pack. So I really like it. It's more it's more of uh, what do you call that? Um, oh my goodness, I'm having a brain freeze. But that has more value to me, I guess, because it's one of my most valuable cards that I ever pulled myself. So pretty cool. Then we also have, this is an original Shonen Jump promo number one, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Love that. Look how different it is with that little beam of destruction going on right there. That thing is just beautiful. Jump 001. This is actually in the plastic when I took it out. Uh, and this thing is like immaculate. Now, the corners... It's hard to see in the picture, but uh, some of the corners, not 100% on, but it had no damage. This thing was perfect. This thing was inside of the manual of a starter deck for, God, 17 years um, with that Joey deck. It was in the manual, like just flat in there. So it was in a box, flat in a manual for over a decade. So it did not get banged around in that plastic wrapper. So I'm optimistic as heck about this being a 10. So <laughs> we'll find out. And the last one in the... Uh, 200 to a thousand dollar value range is my starter deck Joey first edition red eyes black dragon. So this thing is beautiful. Now, obviously, uh, again, it's hard to see in the camera, but there's no. The only thing I could find is the faintest. There's just the the barely the this little imperfection on there, as far as like a little little bit with the cut. So I'm hoping it comes back as an eight or nine. But you never know. But I love old school red eyes cards. So, goodness. Just look how much more vicious this one looks than the first one I showed you. My goodness. And again, it's first edition. Oh, it's beautiful. Man. And this brings us to the final course. Um, these are the cards I believe are worth over $1,000 or you know up to $2,500. Now, honestly, one of them, I don't actually know if it's worth that much. Uh, it's just one that... I just want to get it graded back as fast as possible. I, I'm not even planning on selling it. Just I just want to have it back as fast as possible. So I put it in the $75 card range. So um, it is the special delivery Pikachu. So this is a cool little card, right? Man. So these are super limited if you didn't know. Uh, what was happening is for like a, a few weeks before Christmas this past year, uh, Pokemon Canada to celebrate their you know, Poke Center opening up there. They were sending this out with all orders over. I think it was twenty five dollars. Uh, you get one of these for free in the box. Plus, I got some little Christmas ornament or something of him. Um, and apparently, it was such a hot seller that they ran out and they stopped. And then they made some more and they did it again. And it just they could not keep them in stock. So I just snuck in there, bought like twenty something dollars worth of booster packs. You know, like whatever. And then I, you know. Um, Got this one in the mail, and it's perfect. It was in the wrapping until I just took it out a few minutes ago, or at this point, it's more than a few minutes ago, but you know what I mean, for this video. And it's beautiful. It's immaculate. Although, again, it's it's not in a clear um, sleeve, so I can't really show you. <laughs> but, yeah, the corners are great. The surface is great. Oh, look how crisp that is, is outline. So, yes, this one may not be worth a 1000 or more. It may be worth only a few hundred. Um, but I'd like to just get it back as fast as possible. So I'll, I'll pay the 75 bucks extra. Now here is the last card. Now this one, this one is the most valuable card I think I have now, and I will probably sell it. Um, I got it, you know, from a friend uh, through through Instagram. Um, he was selling it ungraded, and it was a card he pulled himself, and he just needed the cash. Obviously, depending on what it comes back at, I don't know. It could come back as a five for all I know, right? PSA is so sometimes you know you look at a card especially cards that are kind of texturized it can be hard to tell what they're going to come back as um but this is sun goku and vegeta apex of power now this is from the dragon ball super trading card game which i did play for about a year um and it is a secret rare right you get a little symbol down there at the bottom uh this card is like in perfect condition again i don't have it in the Clear sleeve because the size of it, I didn't feel comfortable shoving it in a Yu-Gi-Oh sleeve. Although it may actually have fit in a Yu-Gi-Oh sleeve. It looks a little skinnier than a Pokemon card. But uh, I just couldn't remember how, how big the sleeves you had to use were. And I don't want to risk it getting damaged at PSA when they go take it out. But anyway, so this is a secret rare. And what's funny is 
Dragon Ball's really taken off. Like, I, I haven't played in a minute because I kind of get tired of the constant new sets and erratas and limited lists and ban lists. And, it, and then I'm, a, I'm an OCD person. Like, if I'm playing actively, I want to have everything. And when I played, I think we were up to... We had the four sets and then one of the little uh, mini sets. And I, like, had almost a full set of everything. I had the binders with, like, the, the three across. So, I mean, it was, it was bad. Or, no, four across. I can't remember. But I, I had most of the cards. Not not a lot of the alternative arts, but I had most of the, you know, the main cards. Uh, including the most valuable secret rare they have now, which I had sold previously. <laughs> anyway, so this card right now uh, is going for 300 and something dollars ungraded in, like, played condition. So it is popular, and part of it is because it's a very usable card from the effects. It has Victory Strike, which is basically, you know, pretty much the way this card is designed is if you can swing with it, you you win. It's very difficult to stop, um, and that's kind of why the original Secret Rare, which is a uh, Sun Goku Awakened Power, it's basically Ultra Instinct Mastered Goku. Uh, it's one of the older Secret Rares. It's the most valuable one. They never reprinted it, even in any of the like uh, special edition sets where they reprint cards because it's just too powerful. Uh, and they've never rotted or limited or banned it because it's also very hard to find because they make a specific amount. I will say with Super, one of the nice things is they're very transparent. You know, there's a case that the shop orders. And the case has X amount of boxes. And each case is a complete set. So if a store gets a case of booster boxes, they can open every box and they will have at least one of every single card that is available in the set. There's no like, oh my God, no one at the store got the secret rare, got this one. No, no. If you open up a case, unless they've changed this since I stopped playing. So again, it's been like a year and a half since I stopped playing, but uh, I haven't heard any different. It was that if you bought a case, you had everything in there. So because of that, it's a lot easier to figure that, oh, um, there's only X amount of, you know, Secret rares out there of this card, like the Ultra Instinct Awakened Power, especially because it's from an older set when the game was newer. And I'm I'm sure, I haven't been told this, but I'm sure they would have produced less because the game was newer. So it's like, well, let's not get too crazy. Uh, and now the game is, is so popular, still it's taken off. They're having all these regionals and nationals. And even now with, you know, with stuff going on, they're still doing a remote. They're still doing it by computer. Um, so it's really taken off. So the card's values have actually gone up a lot. So the fact that this card is a secret rare already makes it you know it's one per box as far as our one per one per case um for each secret rare if i remember correctly right i think that's like 24 booster boxes uh, someone correct me if you if you know the difference or the amount but anyways so it's already super hard to get and then it's competitive AF. like literally this is a card that people will actively use in their decks it's not like a lot of other cards which just like oh it's just super hard to find and i like it you know it's, it's a cool one and so everyone's got one stored away somewhere and you can't find them no, no, it's 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 competitive. It's me I don't know. I wouldn't say meta because I'm not active, so I don't know if it's meta, but it's competitive enough that people want it. So this card, PSA ten and BGS ten, I've seen it going for around two thousand dollars confirmed sales. And obviously, again, I don't know. It could come back as a five for all I know. Maybe there's something I can't see on it because after the last uh, returns I got, I have no idea. Um, but raw, it's worth three hundred dollars. I paid less than three hundred dollars for it, so no matter what value it comes back at, even with me putting seventy five dollars in to get it graded, I will be profitable when I choose to sell it. And I will say, I will probably sell it when it comes back because, as much as I love Dragon Ball stuff, just period, and as much as, as well as the game is doing now, because it's such a newer game, it just feels kind of risky, right? Because for all we know, Super could burn out uh, in a year or two years, and then. You know, maybe it's a stock market, right? I could sell it now and miss out on future profit, but I could hold on to it now and lose out on profit. So I may just end up selling it. It really depends. If it comes back as a 10, tell you what, if it comes back as a 10, I'll keep it for at least six months. So uh, just to ride it out a little bit, but we'll see. But I love that effect, especially on the hair where you, you can see that shine's just a little different right there, kind of like the his aura, the heat aura. He's got an Ultra Instinct mastered. It's beautiful. So those are all the cards that I am sending off. Now, with the exception of a couple of cards where the edges, the corners are, are nipped a little bit, but those are mostly the cards that are under 200 value. Um, and then also with that Red Eyes Black Dragon, right? Most of the cards, I'm assuming a nine or a 10. Now let's say everything comes back as a 10, except for the Red Eyes. The current value of all these cards, right? So we've got you know, these two, right? And then we've got these three. 
And then I'm not going to try to really show this off too much, but then we've got these 30, 33 or whatnot. All those cards together, if I'm right on the condition, would be valued based off today's PSA confirmed sales, just over $7,000, right? This is not bad for a bunch of pieces of plastic and cardboard. Uh, send off about, you know, 40 pieces of cardboard could be worth $7,000. Now, it could also be worth like three grand. So either way, I should be, you know, profitable if I were to sell them based off today's values. Um, even if they all came back as, you know, like sixes and sevens and whatnot. But I'm hoping they don't. Um, but like I said, when, when I'm going to send these off. The two I spent the most on to get graded, like I said, the values affect the speed on stuff would be the Sun Goku and Vegeta Apex Power and the Delivery Pikachu. These two, based off the ones I sent off a couple months ago, I'd say they come back right around a month, right? And then these three, based off, again, a similar uh, tier that I sent off uh, last time, would come back. They came back about two weeks slower, so maybe about a month and a half. Now, the we can call it the budget tier if you want. But the budget tier cards I sent off, I think it's two months ago, Fairly certain it was November. Um, they are still only in rece received status at the PSA. So when I pull up the website, they are still not even like starting to check into the what the cards are and what their sets are. Because PSA, when they take them, they want you to show you the different steps of the process. So you can check on your order and see where it is in the process. Uh, they are still in the, hey, we have your cards step. And they have not moved in almost two months. So... Uh, these, these nice little stack here, uh, may be gone for a while. So, so that's literally the process. Um, so what I'll do is when the cards come in, I will upload another video and go over them with you and we'll see if I was right or wrong. Thanks so much for watching guys. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that stuff. You don't have to, but feel free to, if you'd like, uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitch. I'm gonna try to start streaming more. I'm actually getting ready to move. This is gonna be one of the last videos I shoot before I move to my new place. So expect more regular uploads once I get situated in my new place. But again, thank you so much for tuning in. See you all next time. Bye.